were a closely knit family until the demise of their father and husband. One got scholarship to school, while the other opted for apprenticeship due to paucity of funds. Sequeling to peer pressure, he joined gang and got involved in the use of substances. With the consequences of such abuse, unfortunately, he got sentenced for being involved with the crime. The other sibling, on the other hand, despite the societal pressure and pushbacks from his boss, remained sincere and focused and eventually got a university degree, preventing teenage drinking and drug abuse can preclude disastrous consequences that may occur if addiction is left unchecked. Teenage substance abuse prevention is of paramount importance for several reasons. Things are still developing important life skills, their identity, likes and dislikes. If things begin experimenting with drugs to fit in or gain friends, they can unknowingly set themselves up for a potentially life-threatening habit. Prevention is therefore critical. Who owns the problem of preventing substance abuse in teens? Today on your regular health TV talk show, The Physicians, we'll be discussing substance abuse in teens. Who owns the problem? Stay tuned. Another day with the physicians where your health is our business. My name is Dr. Martina Agbere, the regular anchor on this program. And with me in the studio is my very elegant, delectable cerebral <laughs> celebrity <laughs> shrimp. My name is Dr. Mimuna Yusuf Kadri. Welcome to the physicians where your health is our business. I will always remain our business. business. Substance abuse in teens who owns the problem. Mm. Who actually owns the problem? What well, going is a, is a major thing to discuss because um, I had to bring this to the fore because there was an argument recently and somebody actually even wrote something about them uh, where the person felt it was the, the, the problem is more of the, 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 the teens for not taking the bull by the horn, for not taking the destiny in their hands and uh, probably align let's pressures. De let's define who is a team. That's where I think we should start from. Let's define who is the teen. Okay. We're talking about children that are between the ages of 13 and to 19. Teen, yeah. These are children. These are children that their brains are still growing. These are children that their brains are still undergoing development. Okay. These are children that every their formative, they, they, life, they are formative life that we can change, like we talked about destiny, that can change their destiny. Yes, we understand that. But their brains will not stop growing until in their mid-twenties. So a lot of things that they think they know, they want to do, they believe they can do it. Because of the people around them, the parents, the teachers, the guidance, the well-meaning consigned adults around them yeah. can then help redirect I totally agree with you on that aspect, but then you are saying that the, well, the adults, the parents around, around them, them, okay, is it not if they know? Because you are speaking because you are professional. Definitely. You are okay. professional. See, you know that this is their still going on. I like well, the fact that you are bringing that angle. Like, no, yeah. I like you are bringing that angle that you can't give what you do not know. Yes. Now, not tell me this student that don't even know anything at all. That is, the, that is why we adults. Because children, in a way, are already also programmed to listen, respect adults, know, know their views, and adults because we have the power that what we do not know is easy for us to ask and learn. I don't it's think, a learnable I, I, skill. I don't think, I don't think, me, I don't think those that's... adults around them is who I am not. Whose problem is it? Whose problem is it? Those adults. No, I say it is. It's both, the of them, don't, both of them are to be held accountable. Even the children have a role to play. This is the children don't have a role to play. Majority, they, they should be there to guide, support, empower them. Not leaving the children to do. Because if you let, let, let them to do whatever they want to do, they will do whatever they want to do. Okay. And we don't know that 
as adults, as we grow and want to become elderly and retire well, if our children do not go in the right path, our retirement is in jeopardy. Hold it there. I think we'll, we'll continue with this mm. conversation because I'm sure our, our viewers right now will want to just call one or two persons to listen to this very interesting topic. Who actually owns the problem? Discussing teens, as, uh, drug uh, substance abuse in teens. Who owns the problem? Don't go away. We'll be back after the short break. Every day and in every way Enjoy that I find support No matter the role you play You dream back supplement For you and me In your body That I fight you Darabite Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite, love yourself. Welcome to your regular Health Talk TV show, The Physicians, where your health is our business, and of course, we always remain our business. Today's topic is substance abuse in teens. Who owns the problem? As a parent, what is actually going on in your mind now? Who owns the problem? Are you the one responsible? Do you want to take responsibility? Or the child owns the problem? That is what we're actually going to discuss today. And it's going to actually snowball into a lot of other things. So just ensure that you're not going to watch alone. Call somebody to call another person that the physician is actually on so that you can listen and let us know who actually owns the problem of substance abuse in things. So Dr. May, before we went on that uh, short break, I don't know our chit chat. <laughs> we decided to uh, talk about this, okay? So now in this scenario, from what actually the introduction, the parents actually brought up these two children, okay? And uh, one decided to go with the advice of the mother because the father died, and the other did not. The other actually got scholarship and went to school. Same background, went to school and got involved. So, in gang. so why I'm coming, okay. got involved in gang, got into crime, and ended up in jail. Okay. But on the other hand, the second one who went for apprenticeship was focused, despite pushbacks from his boss. Because he, the boss just felt, you can never be rich unless you're a bit fraudulent. But this one still kept, became focused. Now this is one who remained focused. He did not derail, but the other one got derailed in school. What do you think is responsible? Is it because of the environment where they now went? Because even in, no, no, because even the other environment, the other environment was not you see, very much tight. That's what's So what there's happened? There's nature versus nurture. They were both nurtured by the same mom. Sure. Yes, there's no problem about that. Let's not forget they share almost the same DNA because yeah. that will show that they are siblings. Environmental factors come in. Peer pressure comes in. There are many reasons why teenagers even do drugs from experimenting. Experimenting comes from anything around them. People sending it to go and buy maybe cigarettes. They want to check oh, what, why is Uncle this always smoking this? Let me check what it is. Um, why is my daddy? You see, you see a family they have a huge wine bar or whatever bar in the house, and they, in, in the parent is always drinking and they are not giving the children. Children say, why is daddy always drinking something in that green bottle? You know. So they, they may want to experiment. They may want to also do reason to fit in. Because they, they found that in their own group, everybody is doing things and they are not fitting because they, in the Nigerian context, you know, so, G, so they want to fit in and be among the people that will be like a gang okay. or whatever. To feel good. Okay. You know, or to even feel better. So there are many reasons. Did this For these two, there's environmental factor. Look, let's not forget. Let's just give them A and B. Okay. A became focused, got scholarship, yes, went to school. Yeah. B derailed and um, got jailed. A's friends, it would be fair for B's friend most times. A's own, even if we say they are siblings, their brain structure also is made So when A, when A became derailed, derailed. right? Yes. When he became derailed, when he started uh, having this peer pressure, mm -hmm. why was he not able to speak out? Both the of them, role of yes. the parents, the it adults wrote, around them, yes. play a very significant role even in the life just, of even these the children. Society. Yes, now the, so, so it, it plays a significant role. We cannot take it away that maturation of the brain does not end until in the mid twenties, and the brain is spongy. It sponges everything around, and that is why 
we as adults and parents, we need to be able to guide, inspire, empower, encourage the children that we have. In as much as uh, you, the one now derails and the other one down goes, you not you find closure because the truth is that when your child derails, there's that guilt that that you have failed in parenting. There's that guilt that you, are, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. But when you know you have done everything you're supposed to do, that is humanly possible. Yes. That's all spiritually. You find closure. But if the parent actually has tried, you have done what I said. You find you find closure that you done what was humanly possible. You didn't kill your, you didn't you didn't do any. But again, we must be empowered. I'm a doctor. I'm not a mechanic. There are some things that I, let me give you a typical example. I may not be good in a particular thing, and I will have to go and learn it. Either Google or reach out to friends to empower me so that I will be able to empower my children. I can't know it all. So that is why we you have to crave for information to be able to empower the, your children. The reason why I'm focused on is that we want to retire and live good. Most of us, our, our old age is already jeopardized because of the way our children are already taking a part that will not make us happy. Self-actualization is the highest on mass so, so so hierarchy. So, so, so the, the truth so is that, that both parties have yeah, they play, they play a role, but the, the family, family, the family, family play, yes. The, the society but not has blaming the children, no. Even no. the school, every, everywhere, like, everyone, religious is, organization, every, everyone play, everyone takes a village. Yes. To play. So who owns the problem? The back after the short break, don't go away. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. No matter the role you play, you dream back supplements for you and me. In your body, that I fight you. Darabite right, Nutritional Supplements is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite right, from LB Pharma. Darabite. Right, love yourself. Welcome back. If you have just joined us here on the regular health TV talk show, The Physicians, where your health is our business. We've actually been discussing substance abuse in teens. Who owns the problem? And uh, Dr. Mimuna and myself actually did have it really, really hot because she's of the, <laughs> the, of the view. Our own opinion is that uh, the, the, the parents are to be blamed. The, the children don't own the problem. The, the problem is that of the, of the parent. But I, uh, I, but I feel that um, both parties actually should be held accountable because it actually did, uh, does take um, everyone to, to make a, a family or this is keep the society going. But then today I want to bring on board our guest. He is no other person than Mr. Solomon Ijoma. He is actually a prolific writer, he's an author, and he's had experience in, in, in coming across children, uh, teens especially, who got involved in substance abuse. And uh, he wants to like, share his experiences with us and why he decided to write about it. So maybe from what he would say, the one, Mona, my humble self, would probably have closures on whose problem it is, the parents or the children. You're welcome to our program. Yeah, Thank welcome. you very much for having me. You're welcome, sir. Good afternoon, viewers. OK. Well, um, before I actually came on, Dr. Mamuna, I did, from what I just said, would try to talk about the substance abuse in teens yes. and who owns the problem. And I'm aware that you also wrote a book, I think King Destiny or something. Yes. And uh, you want to just tell us a brief something about uh, about the story, the storyline of that book. Thank you very much. The title of the book is King Destiny. It presupposes that there is a destiny that is king. Okay. Now the story started by me thinking on how do we help the teens in getting their destiny stabilized. Yeah. This story is in a family. The father died when they were about to enter secondary school. That means they were 10 years old. So they are left with only the mother to nurture them. Now, because of lack of funds, one decided to go for apprenticeship. That's no option. Not even to say he does no option. He must join his uncle to do more market, to go and learn from a school business and become something in life. Luckily for the other one, he got admission because he had a scholarship. While in school, first year everything was normal, was good. Suddenly, he derailed. Why did he derail? Peer pressure. Yeah. Simple phone. In school, marriage, the table was always, so he was always pinging. 
It's not used to eat. What this thing you always try to what is can I join? And that one had to teach him. If you go to the book how to join. And that was how he joined and even became worse. Yeah, student be what, getting worse than yes. the teacher. The teacher. <laughs> from his background, he had no phone. Yeah. And from what we are discussing, we discovered that the moral upbringing of every child thing rests on a tripod stand, on a trivet. The home, yeah. the school, school yeah. and the, the society. society. Now, see how it works. The home, the child's character is molded in the home. The home molds the child. Pushes the child to the school. school. The school reshares this child and pushes the child to the society. The society rehearses and reshares this and pushes the child both to the school and the home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, every, if you watch a triple stand, any of the legs that has an issue, the, the structure will collapse. Yeah. Definitely. So, both the home, the, the, school, the school, and the society have equal roles to play. But you know this, the power of choice My of God. the person being murdered at times supersedes all these spheres of influence. What I try to bring out from that book is that you can be from the same parent, you can be from the same mother, you can be twin. I'm a twin. Myself, I'm a twin. Mm -hmm. So I got the inspiration from you can be a twin, but you'll be a diff totally different person yeah. from your twin. It depends on your power of choice and the influence around you and how you play about it. That's what the book is all about. So wow. what's, the, what's the, 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 the influence of culture and society when it comes to um, things, um, abuse in, substance, substance abuse in things? Yes, like I said, when the home have done their work, the, society, the school will do the work and push the, the child to the, to the society. Now you discover that society has a lot of work. The society can destroy everything both the home and the school have done. The culture, the influence, the, 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 the kind of group, the friends he has. Like one of them went out and was in the market. There was nothing that was not done. Even from the uncle who he was living with, who told him, look, in this business, you cannot be honest. What? He said, what? My mother did not tell me this. He said, no, you cannot be a successful man without having one or two places you put down that is not good. And that's what the book tends to correct. It is not true. So no matter what the culture, the society push you, if you have your firm stand and focus on what you want, you can just ward off whatever society wants to place. It's not easy. That's the right word to yes. use, not easy. Yes, but no when easy. you are not empowered, yes. when you are not empowered, uh, from home. So how do you survive outside? That is the essence of the book. Information matters. I want to believe that if every child, primary, secondary school, just one, two, three, can have access to this book, it will enable the child to have what, let me use the, the medical term, get the, the necessary alarm dosage, to be sensitive and know that any choice I make, this is the consequence. That information is very key. They say you can, you have the power to make a choice, but you don't have the power to determine the outcome of your choice, the yeah. consequence of your choice. Definitely. Okay, so let's, I, I, let's, let's forget about what you wrote in the book okay. right now. Okay, so in, the, in our society, in Nigeria now, of today, does honesty really pay? Very good question. Does it really, really pay? It seems it does not, but honesty pays. Always. Always. It may take time. It may take long. It may look difficult, but not impossible. In the book, I brought it out clearly. This guy was honest, but paradoxically, his honesty worked against him. You know, your honesty can work against you. He was in the market. An NGO, a woman came to buy things and forgot two million naira in the market in their shop because they were annoyed, worried it was raining. This mob, this boy picked his boss was not around, he picked it. And this is not our money. Opened it. Inside the woman was he saw a card. He called the woman. Ah, Madam, you forgot your money here. The other apprentice told him, why would you give him the card his boss? 
The boy said it's his money. The story of Chateau. It's his money. In fact, in fact, he collided with this woman to carry my money in the name of the woman forgetting me. Like play, like play, they tried it. The boy was honest, was consistent that this is not our money. She forgot it. The woman went to police. At the end of the day, it was discovered it was the woman's money. The woman, the money was given back to the woman. And the man was like, why would you? You are too honest, I'm too honest. I said it when your mother was bringing it to me. I said it, you are too honest for this job. Why can't you get that money? There are one million things you can do with it. This is honesty. The boy was pushed back from the apprentice down to the village. Yeah. This is honesty. <coughs> After some time, this woman came back to say thank you. Without knowing that this boy had been sent back home. Then you ask, where is this boy? Say, ah, because of that, your issue, you must send to The woman traced him, got him. Now, I'm asking your question, does honesty. Yes. Got him. Say, madam, I don't come again. You call problem for me first time. Yeah, have you come again? Say, no. How can we help you? From there, they pick the boy. They pick the boy. They finish secondary school and get that shot. So it may take long. Yeah. It may take now. Every teenager needs to know this. So that in their formative age, they will know that, look, even if I'm suffering now, but I'm suffering for honesty, one day, one time, one year, it will pay back. Tell us about the role of the religious organizations. When it comes to this, why I'm bringing this on board is because I've had a movie produced on substance abuse, and the church members were the ones that brought the man on admission. Tell us the role of yeah. uh, the, the religious. Because <laughs> it's part of our culture. Coincidentally, <laughs> I'm a pastor too. Aha. Uh -huh. I did a program and I did a survey. I asked people, why do you come to church? We will be shocked to hear why many people come to church. The note I got says some say they come to charge their phone. <laughs> but there's no light now, so the church will have light. Yes, 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 so yes, so yes, it's good yes, that you yes, yes, and it's good that you did such a survey to hear this. So you know where it actually starts. Yes. So when you mention church, you're not heaven. It's not heaven. Ninety percent of people will sit there and not some alcohol. Some came to charge their phone. Wow. So whose phone? Some came to exchange. Contacts, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So not everybody there has come to, to see God. <laughs> so who's to blame here? So it's, it's the, the, the church is part of the society. In fact, you'll be sure if I tell that even the worst. Because there everybody is where is seen as being holy. So anything yeah, right. can happen. Mm -hmm. It's actually very dangerous. It's, it's yeah. If I'm talking with you, you can see all the time what I have not mentioned I'm a pastor. If, I'm with you, this. if you mention a pastor, I will become well, more, more, more to watch. Because it, 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 it gives the impression that you are good, but you may not be. We go, yeah, right. Okay. I, well, it's unfortunate that uh, people now come to church just because they want to charge their phone. phone. <laughs> so back to what we're talking about, uh, substance abuse and uh, who owns the problem. So I give you a story now. There was a family, the, the child, he's not even a teenager, the child was involved in substance abuse. Yeah. And they eventually repatriated the child from uh, outside the country, got admission to one of our universities here in Nigeria. That university is actually very strict. They do all informed check, yeah. random check, and they checked again and found that this guy was, was, doing was involved. Okay? So they found a substance in his, uh, in his system. And the parent came to me and I said, okay, let's see. Dr. Memona is there. We can bring the patient to Dr. Memona's office. I discussed, I had a conversation with Dr. Memona. She told me what to be done. And I told the parent, you know what they said? <laughs> the parent said, he's my first son. So, um, and people don't, because he is an Igwe. Mm. He's my first son, so they don't want him to succeed him. Succeed. And that if you can come and do a private consultation at home. And, and rehabilitation. I mean, rehabilitation. No, of that's course. already bridging so that. I'm, why, am I, I'm, why I'm bringing this is some parents are to be held accountable because of fear of stigma. They don't want exactly. people to know about this. Yeah. Okay? Yes. They don't want people to know about them for fear of stigma. They keep uh, isolating these children and they become suicidal. A whole lot of things just come up. So we have, everyone is accountable. People. The body yeah. child. Yes. Who Medical mm -hmm. Mumuna has said is still going to the formative life, yes. the society, the, thing, the family, and the family. So I just want to say no. thank you. It's a lot because even schools, I don't know what you're doing about this book. How do you plan to take it to schools? But I said thank you very much. And uh, of course, for our viewers, I want to just say, 
Uh, he has actually volunteered. He has agreed that he will give us that some of these books. So we'll do a quiz. Whose problem? Who owns the problem? The father, the parents, or the children? Who is responsible? Who should be held accountable? Let's hear from you. You send us an email, and the people that actually answer this and who's on this were properly crafted, give us like five reasons why you think yours is better. We have book that we'll give away. Okay? So, Dr. Um, um, Sajoma, thank you so much for coming on our much. program, The Physicians. And then you are, I'm sure you, 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 Dr. Lamona and I did really, really we, we found it very interesting, okay, talking about this problem because she's a psychiatrist, she held her ground because she's always very protective of her people, of, of, of the teenagers, okay? So, you understand. Of course, I had to play the both role. Both speaking for and against. Of course, you can't be good for when it comes to no. me. I give that out of our feeling. She's a terrible when it comes to that one. So thank you again for coming okay. on our program. I really say God will bless you. Bless you. And uh, on this your um, book, yes. please try as much as possible to connect with the government, state government, okay. primary health, yeah, uh, yeah. so they can actually take the vote going. And to our viewers, I'm sure you have actually seen another part of us arguing in the studio. <laughs> Well, my name is Dr. Martina Agberian. <laughs> Who owns the problem? Are you accountable? Are you doing your work as a parent, father or mother? And for the children, you listen to your parents. Don't allow peer pressure to take you away. That's in your formative life. Your parents will always tell you things that will actually make you a better person. They won't tell you something that is negative. Better person. And for those parents that actually indulge in these substances, in the presence of your children, Please, it is not good because the children tend to imitate their parents. Whatever they see, they think is good because you are their role model. Live right and live well so that these children will become better people in future. My name is Dr. Martina Agberia. Till next time, stay blessed. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure much. having you on set. To all our viewers out there, you've, you've heard us discussing about substance abuse among teens. The role, the ball is in your court as, as we speak right now. There's never a late time to start educating yourself. What you don't have, please acquire it so that you can also encourage and empower your children. And for the children also learning the right way. It takes a whole village to be able to nurture a child. Please feel free to follow us on all our various social media platforms. And if you want to be a part of the show, just like how Mr. Joma is right here, go on our website, click on the form, Feel it and be here. You don't have to be, I keep saying, you don't have to be a doctor, a, a nurse, any healthcare worker to be here. You have a story to tell. We are, you are in the right place to come share it with us at the physicians. My name is Dr. Memuna Isuf Kadri. Remain blessed.